Yes, welcome back to the channel. It's another day in the transfer window. And we've got Arsenal royalty on the channel. Um, probably the biggest Arsenal creator I've I've spoken to in a long, long time. But Babs, how you doing, mate? Yes, you all my good? friend. I'm all good, man. I appreciate the invite as always. And uh let's let's talk Arsenal transfers. Well, there's look, there's a there's a lot to get through. Um, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you go down, like the video. Babs is uh Info will be in the description. We just hit 19k to the road to 20k is well and truly on. Now Romano's come out with a little bit of a a bit of an insight with regards to the Marino deal. Now, obviously, Edu in the last couple of days slash weeks has come out saying you're gonna have a busy end to the window. Calafuri's over the line. You've you've made that defense even stronger now. It looks I don't want to say invincible, but it looks like you're you're going for that Chelsea record. What have been like your thoughts? kind of like up until now in the transfer window? I think it's been steady, you know, and a lot of Arsenal fans are asking for a lot of signings. I actually feel like I'm on the side of our team needs continuity as well. I don't want to see no major changes this season. I want to kind of keep the same players in and kind of double down that way. Because if you go back to the start of last season, we made a lot of changes. Havertz came in, Rice came in, and yeah, Timber as well got injured, unfortunately. But when you make that many that level of changes, it takes time to adapt. Whereas this year, I want to hit the round running straight away. And so mm. I think one thing Arsenal fans can't take for granted is that continuity of having the same players there, working under the same manager and having them have that, you know, energy and chem chemistry to work together. So I feel like, yeah, I'd like um, maybe one or two more signings, a forward if Ketia goes and a midfielder as well. But it looks like we've got Califuri in, that's done deal. You know, we've got him in, had his first game. Marino probably is going to happen soon as well. And one more signing past that, it's a solid, steady window. But I always feel like if you need to make a lot of changes during the transfer window, it's because you've made a lot of mistakes in the past. And also mm. the last year have been very good and very solid in that. Yeah, do you know what as well? As well like the, the Color Fury signing for me, it gives Arteta a bit of a selection headache. Obviously, the Champions League format's different this year. There's more games. You'd think that Arsenal would kind of take the, the domestic side of the Cups, the FA Cup and the League Cup a little bit more serious. Hopefully going into the last stages for you lot, for the rest of us. <laughs> kind of hope you foul. But in terms of the back four, first game of the season, Wolves at home. Do you think Color Fury will start? Zinchenko's done quite well for your preseason, or do you think he'll kind of stick to his guns uh, and go with what he knows? The thing is that I don't know, and that's the best thing possible. Is I want my team to be unpredictable. I can't. I shouldn't mm. be able to tell you my lineup beforehand because if I'm as a fan can't tell you that. Imagine being the opposition manager trying to prepare for that. Going, well, Calafuri starts and Chenko start. What zone he, he, is he going to play? And I think that's Mikel's aim this year is not having a set eleven. I think our bigger mistake was back in 22, 23 where we started like in fantastic form with Zinchenko and Jesus coming into the side. We had the same team week in week out, and you can't rely upon that. Not to beat Man City on the squad they have. So I think this week, I think just uh, just against Wolves, I think Zinchenko is going to start. But past that, you might have Calafuri starting. Timbo might come back and start instead. You might have a youngster starting out of there, out of nowhere as well. Habits might start up front, but then you move move to midfield later in the game. So I think the aim for this year is being unpredictable. And if you can't guess my tactics, then you can't prepare for them either. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think that's kind of the best way. I mean, Man City kind of does like a roulette with Pep. You yeah. never really know the back four he's going to play. I think the only one that's certain in that team that's going to start a week in week out is Harland and Rodri. You know, even the goalkeeper, he, he, from time to time, Edison doesn't look like he's their number one or Taker comes in. I think your, your defensive line, especially with the Gabriel and Saliba and Ben White, but that that unpredictability of is it Zinchenko, is it Timber, is Kivior going to stay, is it Tommy Asu, is it Calafuri? Obviously, the inverted into midfield gives, like you, like you said, it's a, it's the worst nightmare for an opposition manager. And then you kind of move into midfield now where you've got Declan Rice has played as an advanced eight. Do you think? he could put Rice back into a DM position or do you think Marino could play there when he signs? Because the likelihood is it's going to be done probably I think in the next look, couple of days. The thing with Rice is we, we can play him as eight right now at the start of the year and with Thomas Partey fully fit, I think we're more than fine with Partey, Odegaard and Rice is a very good midfield there. And the whole idea of getting Marino done as soon as possible, we don't need him tomorrow. If he starts against Wolves or doesn't start against Wolves, we're still going to win that game, man. We've got enough quality to go and beat Wolves. And so I'd rather see Arsenal take their time with Moreno and get the best deal possible and spend as less possible, you know, to go and spend on other players instead. But if once Moreno comes in, then I think in certain games, if you want to have a more stable number eight and have Rice as a six, then go for it. Because look, as great as Party is on the ball, I think off the ball, we've seen him lose a bit of his legs. You know, he's getting older with a lot of injuries and he struggles at times. Whereas Rice is a lot more, you can cover ground a lot mm -hmm. easier. So you can have in certain games, Rice as a six and there's 
those defensive games and have Moreno in front of that as well. I think what will catch people off guard with Moreno is the fact that he's very comfortable in tight spaces. He can collect the ball, he can turn. He's very smooth with the ball. I think because he's tall, people think he might be a bit robust on the ball, a bit like Xhaka. I think he's a, more, a bit more fluid with how he plays. But I think once he comes in, he won't be a guaranteed starter straight away. And that shouldn't be the case either. If you're coming to a top side, you can't be guaranteed a starting place straight away because the, the team's already of a high calibre. So it just depends on how Mikel Arteta feels um, and what the game needs. In, in your midfield, it's going to be very interesting because you've got your, your first three away games are places, you know, Villa Park, you didn't win last year. Obviously, they beat you home and away. City, very strong defensive performance, but didn't get a win. And obviously us, at that point, we, we were, we you know, falling out of the sky. We were conceding that many goals. Do you think your midfield going into next season with the likes of Marino is a lot stronger going up against the Villas, the Cities and the Spurs is with the likes of the addition of Marino because surely another year, more more experience going for a title puts you in a lot stronger position going into these games. No, we're a lot stronger. A lot stronger. And I can see it from Leverkusen and Lyon. Both those games, especially Lyon, you, you could see an Arsenal side completely in sync. Mikel has got a lot of complex tactics and where he wants the players to be. But we're looking fluid. Like, we're looking very positionally fluid. Uh, players can move in certain zones. Sometimes a six might move as an eight. You know, in the last games, mm. Inkenko is dropping a lot deeper and Partey would move high up the pitch. That's something that we're not used to seeing. But it's because these players have spent so many so much time under Mikel Arteta. Rice has been only here for a year now, but he's learned so quickly. And with Saka and Co being, what, three, four, five years now, with the amount of tactics Mikel has, and we know how tactically great he is as well, the, the, the sooner the players learn that and the more in sync they are with that, those tactics, we're going to be a lot stronger regardless. And that's why I go back to it. When Liverpool won a title in 1920, they signed one player the summer before, and that was Adjon on a free transfer. But because they had played, spent so much time on the Jurgen Klopp and the players and they understand all his tactics, they were able to go and blow Man City out of the water. So I think with the continuity Arsenal have, the time we spent on Mikel Arzea, we're going to see it come to front this season. Are you... When you, when you look at the start of your season, is it better to get the, the City fixture out of the way in terms of the away fixture? Because the last two title races, you've had um, you've had the fixture at the Etihad kind of the March-April mm. time, as well as the North London derby. I think the fixture run for you, knowing the fact that the back end of the season, Villa Park, the Etihad, and obviously the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, all of those fixtures will be at home for you on the other on the other side. Is that surely that's that's a positive? I think it's a positive because also players are fitting available. When you get to the latter parts of the season, some players are injured or suspended, mm -hmm. and in those games you struggle. Whereas now, uh, if we can go to the Etihad and we've got Timber available, Saka available, Sharp at the start of the season, having just had preseason as well, I think it's the best time to get those games over and done with. And if we can get results as well, it sets it sets a entire it sends a, like a statement to the, to the league, you know, to go look. Arsenal are serious this year, and the players they have are more set than and, and better than ever before. They're sharp and they're in business, and because it's at the Etihad as well. If we can go and get a win early in the year, imagine how it feels to Man City players to watch that and go, hang on a minute, these guys have come to our ground right at the start and beat us as well. So I'd rather get it done over as soon as possible because as we get later into the season, if we're in the FA Cup and we've got the Champions League as well, there's a lot to focus on. Whereas right now, it's clear, it's the Premier League, you focus on that and you get the results as soon as possible. Yeah, I, th I think definitely it kind of a good strong start. A win against Wolves and then go in and, and put a few goals past Villa. Villa have got a tough start as well. I don't. I think West Ham are going to be a bit of a dark horse this year. If, they, if West Ham mm. can get a result, kind of, and and dent that shield a little bit, then you obviously, I think you'll you'll put three or four goals past the Wolves. You obviously, keep that clean sheet, build off of last season, and then go in against Villa. I think it puts you in a, in a great position. The attack's been very. There's a lot of news about it. Is it going to be Jokeres? Are you going to bring in a wire player? There's a lot of people talking about Enketia. Arsenal need to move him on. The, the talks of Marseille are broken down. Where do you kind of see your what, what? Well, what's your best front three going in for that Wolves game in your opinion? Obviously, Saka on the right. Does Havertz? Does he play in the midfield position with Jesus down the middle? The left hand side's debatable as well. Trossard or Martinelli? Where do you kind of see that front three against mm. Wolves? The thing is, right, it all depends on how Wolves set up. So if they're playing a deep mid-block or a uh, uh, low, low block as well, then you can play the more technical players like Trossard, Havertz and Jesus. And those three have a very good combination. Mikel talked about it after the game against Leverkusen. These three players combine pretty well. And Havertz only works in midfield when you've got those technical players around him. Because he's almost, even if he's starting in midfield, he's kind of our, our false striker at times. He'll burst forwards and make runs in behind. And then Jesus will drop deeper because they're false nines. And they open and try to exploit the spaces. Whereas in this game here... 
if Havertz starts up front and you've got Martinelli next to him, Saka next to him as well, in those big games, I think that will be our front three. Havertz, Saka, Martinelli, where you've got the pace on the, on the counter-attack. Havertz is surprisingly good in those big games as well. He scores a lot of important goals. He saw it last year against Spurs, against Chelsea, and even assist against Man United. But I don't think we've got a set front three this year. And I think that I like that as well. The only player that's set on our team is Bukayo Saka as mm. a right winger. He's a guaranteed best player on that right-hand side. Odegaard on that side as well, and Ben White. Apart from that, things will change a lot. Some games you'll have Timber starting or Moreno, and then sometimes you have Calafru starting instead, and you might have Martinelli and Trossard rotating if we sign a new player, maybe another, another striker as well, then you go to rotate that as well. But I think, so I'll, you'll be surprised to see Gabriel Jesus this year. I think he'll he'll surprise a lot of people by a resurgence because he's fully fit again. And if he can stay fully fit, and we saw at the start of 2023, he's a very, very good player. Yeah, that, that's the thing. He he looks like he's put on a lot of size. He looks like he's sharp, fit, mm. hungry for the season. But there's always obviously that question about can he stay fit throughout the season? And you look at that right hand side, surely Arsenal cannot go another season with Bakai Saka playing every single minute of every game. I think I've said this a lot of times. Arsenal at times need, need to get used to seeing Saka on the bench. And you know, I do think you need to bring in, in my personal opinion, a wire player. Everyone's saying, oh, bring in Yoki Reyes, bring in Ossiman, bring in Tony. You scored 91 Premier League goals last year. And in all comps, you, you scored north of, I think, 120 goals. So scoring, and we saw that against Leon, two centre-backs on the score sheet, you know, a few different goal scorers against Leverkusen. We've seen this Arsenal team have got goals everywhere. But recently, I know the standard have come out and said you're linked with Komen. Uh, the few papers in Germany have signed Leroy Sane because of the Arteta links from City. Do you think bringing in a player... Who may obviously the drop off between Saka and Nelson is is quite significant. Nelson occasionally chips in. I think he got the League Cup goal winner against Brentford last year. But you need someone who's got that equal stand. You look on the left hand side, Trossard and Martinelli, very even ability at times. But do you think you'll bring in a wire player, or do you think you're at the end of the window you may go back in for Yoki Rez? You see, I don't see us signing a right winger. So the idea of Saka being on our bench, I don't see happening because I think Mikel sees him as our our Rodri our Haaland, the, the, the starter, the guarantee one. You don't see Rodri getting benched ever, right? Because he's that good for, for for Man City. And Saka's the same for Arsenal. He's the most consistent attacker we have. And sometimes, yeah, he's out of form. But the idea of signing a, a right winger to back him up, you had a lot of Arsenal fans like call for Michael Elise. He was a fantastic player. Why would Elise want to go from Crystal Palace to Arsenal and sit on the bench? Because Saka's never injured. He's always fit, he's all available. He's Mikel Arteta's favourite player on the right-hand side. And so what I'd rather have is players that are versatile that can play on the left and right. So we talk about Kingsley Coleman, he's comfortable on both sides. And that's a sign that I'd like to see happen because of that. Because he's, he's alone. Out, it's not, he's out, it's, but he's it's, nowhere near the level of, of It's not the same, else. but it's the idea in those certain games where we need a bit of pace off the bench. And the, the fastest player that Arsenal have is normally starting, and that's Gabriel Martinelli. You bring on Kingsley Coleman, you're not relying on upon him. You know, I think when he gets injured a lot for Bayern, it's because he starts a lot of games for them, or he's also starts a lot of games. So Arsenal, it won't be the case. And then also the Champions League as well. On transition in the counter-attack, where you're playing a deep block and you're trying to counter-attack. The idea of having Coleman fresh off the bench and coming on and thriving straight away, for one season, I think it's fine. I don't see him as a long-term signing because of, of, cause of his injury uh, history as well. I think it's a short-term signing. For the, you know, just to give us a little extra boost for the season and pass that, we'll see, see what happens with him. But Jesus as well can play on the right-hand side. And I think in certain games, when you have to take Saka off, you can move Gabby on that side. You've seen Fabio Vieira, Fabio Vieira play there as well. We're not going to sign an out on that right winger, but the left-hand side, on the other hand, I can see us approving upon that. You know, the idea that Arteta wanted to spend £60 million on Mudrik from, from Shakhtar. Why would you want to spend your record time on a player who's a left forward if you're not trying to replace the current left forward? So I think Gabriel Martin needs to be on point this season and he has to be sharp because I think Mikel is looking at the left-hand side and I think he sees that as a bigger priority right now than down the, down the middle because Ossiwin's available, we've not made a move for him. Kind of, It's kind of very telling. Nico Williams as well. He's He, he was yeah. the one I thought. If you if you would have broke the bank, maybe not in terms of the, the, the salary the salary would have broke the bank, but the release clause was around 50 million euro, 55 million euro of add-ons. But his salary at Bilbao, um, Athletic Club, they've put him through the like, broke records to keep him. And you look at Barcelona, we're thinking, hang on, we could have a Laminia Mao Williams. If Arsenal in the next year, because this is this is my theory, and you've got to hear me out on this, I think Arsenal will go back in for Benjamin Sesko next summer. I think he's been advised well. Similar to Erlen Haaland, he had the Man United lurking, he waited another year, and then bang, City come out of nowhere. I think Benjamin Sesko will wait another year, but you'll go back in for him. Great profile, tall, strong, fantastic finisher, compress. He ticks every single box. Bakayo Saka on the right, and like you said, you've got Jesus, Havertz could 
if needs be, if injuries could probably play out there. On that left-hand side, Martinelli last year, it, he had a lot of shots on target, but the XG was nowhere near as high as the year before where he got the 15 league goals. Then I think Trossard, 28-29, fantastic finisher, but I think you need someone else in the team. Like City have got Foden and Haaland in that front line. At the moment, the only one whose output is up there is, is Saka. If you break the bank and bring in a Nico Williams on that left-hand side, I think you may have a point there. That That sort of area could be up for grabs for a potential signing. I don't necessarily think Leroy Sane is realistic. He'd mm -hmm. come in as your highest earner. You know, I know he, I know he, um, or maybe second highest behind Havertz, but I know he's fits the profile. The manager knows him. Champions League experience. Do you think you'll go in maybe next summer back in for Nico Williams? If Williams is available, I think Arsenal are going to go for him. And I think you've, you've seen it this window. You know, the amount of times we linked to him is not it's not a surprise because the quality, he's a mix of Trossard and Martinelli. That's what we want on the left-hand side is a player who is just as fast as Martinelli, so he can be explosive and on the counter-attack give teams something to think about. But in those tight spaces, in those tight games, you've got a low block, you can manoeuvre around it, you can keep the ball nicely. Whereas I think Martinelli is a bit of a, he's got explosive pace, but in those tight spaces he can struggle. Trossard can do that tight spaces, but he ain't got the explosive pace. We want a mix of that. And so if it's not Nico Williams, I'm, I'm sure there'll be other profiles that become available that Arsenal might sign out of nowhere. Like Calafuri, someone that before the, the Euros, no, no one kind of knew about him, but now past the Euros, Arsenal have gone and signed him after that as well. And then, you know, when you've got Havertz up front, the idea of signing a natural number nine with with a, a, a top wide forward and left and right hand side, I'm not sure that's going to happen, you know, unless Mikel finds a player that he can think that can complement both of those players. And the only player I see in the world that does that is maybe uh, Alexander Isak, who's comfortable out wide as he is down the middle, but he's not available right now. And maybe if he's available next summer, then as we see with Arsenal and Declan Rice, when Arteta likes a player and he thinks he's perfect, he'll wait for him. He'll wait for the right time to go and sign that player and we'll see what happens there. But for now, I think, yeah, a wide forward on the left-hand side is a bigger priority for me than signing a striker. And that's because I feel like that's how Arsenal can attack the season is have two top wide forwards that are scoring on both sides. You have Erdogan and like goals with, as well. With exactly. Mane, and then Havertz is the perfect, he's the perfect, he'll score goals for you. He'll get a lot of chances. And I think, don't be surprised if Havertz gets a, a fair amount of goals this year. Last year, 13 league goals, and half the year he weren't scoring. He was out of confidence. Yeah, I, I think he'll get very close to 20. And whereas uh, this year, 18, he, even the, the game against Leon, he, he created so many chances for himself with his movement alone. And with Arsenal being more fluid than ever, more in sync with the manager's ideas and making more chances, then I think it's a very good chance that Havertz scores goals this year. And Saka, of course, will, will be double figures again. And then they decide to Martin Elliott-Trossard to decide who's going to be the left-hand side. Yeah, I mean, that's... It's kind of like a false nine. It's like the way Bobby Firmino was at Liverpool. I think that's what Havertz can do for you. If I was to offer you, hypothetically, Victor Jokires, or however you pronounce it, Ossiman or Tony, out of the three, if you could sign one Rangers window, because I don't think, personally, you'll go out and break the bank for an Alexander Isak. I think Newcastle have done very well to hold on to Bruno, uh, Gordon and Isak. Out of the three, who would you sign? Because there's... I don't know if you saw the report coming out in Sporting lowered their uh, release clause with notes, their sell on clause with Coventry and negotiated it down from 15% to 5%. That kind of told me they're anticipating a sale. Obviously, they get more money. They've, they've lowered it down. Who would you go for? Would it be Jokerez, Osiman? I think he's more likely Chelsea bound or Tony. Mm, I think the, pro the, the, the most perfect profile, just talking about the player, is Osiman. Because he's a fantastic presser. I think he, he wins the ball more, more times than any striker in, in the Serie A. He's very, very aggressive with his press. And also in terms of... Mikel talks about box efficiency. So he wants someone in the box that's going to take his chances consistently. And Osimhen's done that for Napoli as well. He's at a right age. He's available. He's not. He's expensive, but for, for a player of his age and profile, I think he's perfectly fine. I think he's a perfect profile. But the reason why I think Arsenal made a move for him is... They know something behind the scenes. Maybe it's the personality of the player and the attitude. And that's important for Mikel Arte. He signs players that have the right temperament behind the scenes as well. And maybe Osman doesn't have that. Then we talk about Victor Jokeres. I think he's the closest past that. You know, Ivan Tony is a player, again, that they're not going to move for because we've had so much stuff behind the scenes. And I mean, he gives interviews every single day. And if he stands for Arsenal and he's on the bench and he goes to speak to, you know, the Daily Mail one, one couple of times, Mikel will you know, be losing his mind anyway. So I think Victor Jokeres... He's the most moldable because he's still of an age that you can mold him into what you want. He's got a lot of physical attributes as well. He's not quite Osman's level as it is now, but in a year's time of working under Mikel Arteta with his physical ability and the fact that we're not need him straight away as well, so he has time to adapt, lack of pressure, I think he'd be an amazing striker. It just depends on how much putting we're going to offer him for. If he's available for anything over 60, we're not going to go for him, but anything under that, then I think Arsenal have a chance.
Yeah, I mean, it's they're talking at one point, well over 100 million euros, and he started kicking off. Lukaku's links with Conte. Just, just throwing a name out there, would you have taken Dominic Solanke? Because in terms of the, in terms of a fox in the box, 19 league goals, mm. presses from the front, homegrown, 57 million is not, it's not, it's expensive, but it's for a guy that's only really had one season, but it's not horrible, mm. like price tag. Would you have taken him? I think Solanke would have been a good option for Arsenal, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I think it's a good sign for Spurs as well. I think he's guaranteed more starts for Spurs straight away because Arsenal are more flexible. But Solanke's a player who is comfortable also with the ball to feet as well. And that's very important for us. We don't want a striker who's very stiff. He'll score a lot of goals, but he won't be able to come back with the rest of the players. So uh, there were some rumours, actually, I think towards what middle of last season in January that Arsenal liked Solanke as well. He's a good profile. He's a good profile as well. But I think maybe Arsenal wants someone... I have a feeling that Mikel Arteta has a certain striker that maybe we've not talked about, whether it's Isak or someone else, that's his main target, and he's waiting for that to become available. Unless it's another opportunity like Shesko that becomes available, that's £50 million, release clause, you go and pay that now. I think they're going to wait for the right striker instead and sign him maybe next summer. Uh, or if he becomes available this summer, then hopefully this summer. I think that I think that guy is Isak. I, I, yeah. I think, I think he's, You can tell, you can tell. He, he, I don't want to. I don't want to use that legend of your football club, that number fourteen. Not any Inkatia, the the proper fourteen. The he kind of gives me that sort of like the way the way he runs at the ball, it's so tall but so brilliant. Yeah, cutting. exactly. The way he wraps his foot round for a finesse is kind of like Henri esque. But obviously, yeah. I don't want to say that yet. But if you sign him, that's and, it. And that's the thing, man. And that, we 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 wanted him before. Uh, before he went to Sossi, before he went to Newcastle, we wanted to sign that that January, but he was too expensive. He was out of form as well. Yeah, I think he had scored like four league goals that year. Newcastle took the punt, and he's worked out so far. He's shown that he can do it in the Premier League, and it's the fact that he's comfortable out wide. And I think that's massive for Mikel Arteta. If you sign a striker, seeing how quality our wide forwards are, you need to have that striker being able to convey on the left and right hand side. So he's flexible, he's versatile, he's fluid, and that makes Arsenal even more predictable. Yeah, look, it's going to be a very interesting season. I've I've said it a number of times. I think this will finally, unfortunately, be your year. I think you've learned from from previous mistakes, and I think it pains me to say it because I can't stand your football club. But I think you'll get it over the line, and I'm sure you're probably going to have your chest out the whole year, especially if you get Marino and someone else over the line. I'm I'm guessing you're you're going to back your football club and say you're going to win it. Of course, of course, it's been a long time coming. And when we do win it this year, then I think it will be uh, it will be the whole process coming to a floor. You know, for all the years of pain that we've had under Arteta, and you know, we saw the quote from Neville back in 2021: "What's the planet Arsenal? What they're doing?" We had to go through all of that. And even though Arsenal fans saw the vision straight away, you know, it's, it's taken time, and there's still some fans that doubt it as it is right now. But I think this year everything feels ready. Everything feels cooked. It's not undercooked. Everything, everyone feels at the right age, at the right temperament as well, with the right experience. I think the league title for Arsenal this year is the aim, and I think we're going to get it. Look, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting season how you get on with the rotation side of things. And obviously, mm-hmm. the Super Cup's on tonight. So this is kind of, for me, the, the start of the season and Man United in two days' time. But look, what, what sort of content have you got coming up and where can people find you? Yeah, obviously, so on Bass 14 on YouTube, I'd advise you to just stay away from Bass 14 on Twitter. He is a bit of a menace. Um, whereas on YouTube, Arsenal content, it'll be coming very soon. Transfer news, we've got a video maybe coming out tonight or tomorrow. And then past that, we've got the five things we learned after the game against Wolves on Saturday. So content's coming soon, so stay tuned as always. Yeah, make sure you get over it if you're not already and subscribe to Bavis' channel. Stay away from the Twitter because he's in a lot of uh, Twitter beefs with a lot of rival fans. and and, and So and Twitter's full, man, it's just beefing. That's all it is. But look, we are going to wrap up. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. The aim is to get 20, 21K by the end of the month. We will see you all soon. Thank you all for watching. We are.